So if you are in the NFT space, then definitely you have seen a bunch of videos showing how this project or that project is gonna 100x, 1000x, you know, give this $1,000 per month profit, passive income, all these kind of things, right? Well, this can be true and this can be real, of course. There are a lot of winners when it comes to NFTs. There are a lot of people making amazing profits, making a fortune out of NFTs, but no one is really mentioning all these stories where people lose money, you know? You don't really see it that much because it's not as popular, you know? So I'm making this video for people who are just starting or have been here for a little bit, so maybe they don't know as much. And for people who have been in the space, maybe they will be just curious to hear my experience, what went wrong and where I did mistakes and where it caused me to lose my money that I invested. And as always, before we begin, this is not a financial advice, I'm here for pure entertainment and educational purposes, so do your own research and invest at your own risk. I've been in crypto since 2017, so I'm quite familiar with cryptocurrency space. I've been through different phases of that, through bear market, bull market, all ups and downs. I've been into mining, I've been into trading, ICOs, you know, different kind of things, but I've only recently started trading and investing into NFTs, so for me it's still sort of a place where I learn a lot but definitely I have gained and lost a lot as well I'm happy that I'm in profit right now just due to my experience overall but I want to share some stories and what went wrong so here we can see the first project that I ever minted it's called Team Tuskers I didn't know exactly what I was doing I really got bought into this art even though it looks kind of stupid I know back then I was clueless I was like okay let me just start investing into something because I knew eventually I'll make some mistakes so I decided to uh, evaluate my mistakes and cut my losses at the very beginning because I knew I'm not gonna invest all of my money I'm gonna start small and then eventually I'm gonna lose some of it and it's gonna be just the payment for my experience at the beginning so I bought this project, I minted it, uh, I'm not sure if it was like two soul mint or one soul mint, doesn't really matter. Um, I think it was uh, two soul. So it was initial like, let's say $200 investment. And then I bought another one from the secondary market. The red flags that at that time I didn't know that are uh, red flags were that the developers, they were really driving the community to buy the floor, to sweep the floor. You know, they're talking only about the floor price. They're not talking about any utility. They're not talking about any sort of like goals or purposes or any sort of product or service that they're going to develop. You know, of course, they were claiming that they're going to do the staking. They're going to have some charity things and all this kind of, you know, uh, stuff that sounds nice. But once the mint started, it was only about the money. And once the mint ended, the developers started disappearing and the issues started happening. We were promised to have staking right after the mint, which never happened, I believe. Uh, we've been waiting for, uh, I'm not sure, like a week or so. And there was one issue and then another one, another one. And they were not engaging as much. You know, they were just putting a blame on the community, which is really, really bad. I mean, right now I do understand that. But back then, um, you know, that looked like a valid thing for me because I didn't know much about the space. So uh, definitely look out and pay attention what developers are doing, if they're doing something, how they are communicating with the community, what's their main drive, is it just the money or are they actually focusing on building something, you know, how much they are in communication with the community, what's their communication with the community, you know, because some people are taken to another extreme and do expect the developers to make an announcement every like six hours or every single day, you know, when they're building something and working on something. But I think this is a little bit extreme. But at the same time, if the team is not there for a week and, you know, the issues are not addressed and the community keeps bringing up the issue and it's just being ignored, I don't think it's a very good sign. It's definitely not a good sign for me right now. So these days I look for that, I just really try to evaluate how the developers are communicating and what's their intentions. Doesn't matter how beautiful or, you know, or hyped up the art can be, at the end of the day 
It's a business and it's supposed to be treated as such. Second project slash lesson that I want to mention today is called Skull Invasion. Uh, oh boy, um, this project I have bought one at one soul and right after I bought it the floor price started dipping a lot like it went down to 0 0.6 and I was like okay fine it's going down it's it's bad <laughs> I don't like it but I hope it's gonna go up so uh, it was late night so I thought okay let me go to bed let me go sleep and I'll check it in the morning it's fine otherwise I'm gonna cut the losses it's gonna be all cool so I wake up in the morning and I see this. I try to check the Discord, nothing's there. Everything got deleted, Twitter accounts and everything. The main red flag in this project was the staking. Because the staking was too high, like the daily income was way too high for such a project. And don't get me wrong, there are some projects with great ROI, you know, with great returns. Um, but it should be the case when there is some sort of income fulfilling this uh, liquidity pool you know if there is no source of income uh, and if it's only the money from the mint that developers are putting there for staking and then like slowly giving it out to the community to make community happy then you need to ask the question like what is going to happen when the money will start running out uh, is there something coming is there something that they're working on that will create more profit that will create more revenue for the project so that the community will keep having this high daily passive income and if it's not then just think about it twice maybe it is some unique project that will pull it off uh, but from my experience again and again i observe these projects now from the distance similar projects that run into that situation and eventually such projects they just have owners who disappear, you know, and the community is sitting there um, either in the Discord or somewhere else and deciding what to do with their NFTs. So please watch out for the projects that don't have sustainable source of revenue or income when it comes to staking. This is a huge, huge red flag. And another lesson slash project that I would like to share today, it's called Galaxy Robots. Uh, I've mentioned this project in one of my videos because I did invest into that project myself. Um, the floor price was above 3 sol at some point, I believe 3 weeks ago. It was traded around 2, 2.5 sol, everything was fine, staking was great, you know, they had huge plans coming, they had a roadmap, everyone was pretty hyped, everything was going fine, and then all of a sudden the communication from the team started decreasing dramatically. First they started disappearing for almost a week, you know, and the whole community was trying to stay calm and chill and maintain the floor price, you know, um, be optimistic about the project and the floor price was around 1.8 to Sol, which was like great, I think, on the behalf of the community, it was amazing. The fact that developers started disappearing, it was already kind of a red flag and there was no communication. I want to emphasize this again. NFT projects are about the community. The community is like a heart of the project, you know? Without the community, nothing's gonna work. If the heart is not working, then the body is not gonna run, you know? It doesn't matter how strong and nice and amazing the body can be, how fast it can run. If the heart is not working, the body is not gonna do anything. Same with NFTs. Please, see how the developers are communicating with the community. Make sure that they're having good communication. They have uh, mods, they have, you know, different people in different time zones that are able to answer all the questions, that all the questions and all the issues, like legitimate questions are being answered. Because sometimes when people start bringing up the questions, the whole community start attacking them and they're like, well, stop fighting, you know, this is all criticism and whatever. But if it's like a legitimate question or an issue, maybe you don't have to like throw it in a general chat, you know, to scare off everyone. But maybe like put it somewhere in Discord in suggestions or in some sort of like holders chat where people can actually look at this and be like, oh, wow, okay, that's a good point. Let's address that with a team, you know, because with this project, it was very interesting because we had an additional mint of weapons 
that were supposed to multiply the daily staking uh, up to 9x, which everyone got excited about. But then I started questioning, I was like, okay guys, if it's nine times more income, meaning someone will start training out the money from the liquidity pool nine times faster. So what are we gonna do next, you know? How are we gonna fulfill all this money back? And there was no answer. So that brings me to the last lesson that I've learned is that at the end of the day, we are investors. Yes, we become a part of the community here, but make sure that you look at these things as an investor because you do invest your own money. If there is something that you got gifted, like some brother of yours or whoever just gave you the NFT for fun, you, you don't lose anything, then sure, like, you know, just stay there for fun and don't care about how much this NFT costs. But if you're here to make some profits, if you're here to cut your losses and really, really make it, then make sure to not get too much attached to the point when you cannot analytically think about things that are being red flags, you know. So this is the most important thing, you know, when it comes to investment, in my opinion. I really, really try to, yes, be involved in the project as a part of the community, but at the same time to have this viewpoint a little bit outside, you know, the crowd and really look at things and be like, hmm, okay, mm, the price is dropping. Is it actually legitimate reason behind it? The price is dropping or is just a pure manipulation of someone trying to buy in cheap, you know, because these things also happen. I know people like learning on their own experience, on their own personal uh, losses <laughs> and trades, etc. But if my video will help you, and I hope it will help you to cut your losses and make more profits just by avoiding these specific points that I mentioned in this video, I hope you will do better in this space and I hope you'll make even bigger profits than you currently do. And on this note, guys, I'm gonna end off this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do enjoy my videos, please drop me a like and subscribe to my channels. There is way more things to come. I'm gonna be doing some flipping challenges, so stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.